Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. Apologies for not being on camera for today, but honestly, I wasn't going to record. In fact, I was working on a couple of other projects, but there were a couple of very interesting things that have developed in the news, and I really wanted to discuss them. So credit to Cal Cutland for this particular piece of information. I'll link that article in the video description. But the RX 6700 and 6700 XT, well, there's some funky goings on. Let's put it that way. As you are likely aware, AMD have made an official announcement that on the 3rd of March we will see products being unveiled. And of course, we know that it is going to be the RX 6700 XT. But according to Cal Cutland, it is only going to be the 6700 XT, and we will not see the 6700 vanilla, despite the fact that there have been some rumours that AMD were planning to show this off as well. In fact, even Cal Cutland mentions that there had been a plan to show the 6700, but this has since been scrapped. Personally, I'd only heard that the 6700 XT would be shown off, and that the 6700 would be either shown or released at a later date, but, you know, maybe um, I just hadn't heard about that specifically. Either way, yeah, the 6700 XT is allegedly the only product which is going to be shown the 3rd of March, and it's going to become commercially available, i.e. you'll be able to buy it, well, sort of, we'll get into that in just a second, the 18th of March. This product actually features 12 gigabytes of memory, and that's a 192-bit bus, of course, and again, it has 40 compute units. I'm just blazing over the specs because I think most of us understand what they are at this point. So, the bad news, though, is the availability. According to the information received by Cal Cutland, the number of cards available will be very limited, and that's putting it generously. It seems that in France, anyway, there's going to be about 100 reference model cards available, which I'm sure you'll agree is absolutely paltry. And as for the um, custom variant cards, well, the numbers are going to possibly be a little bit higher, maybe a couple of hundred cards at max, but again, it seems quite low. Strangely enough, Cal Cutland also states that the reference uh, cards will also be going end of line very early, which is actually at odds to what AMD had hinted previously that they wanted to keep the reference designs as alive as long as possible. So whether this is actually true or whether it's going to be the partner reference cards and AMD are still going to have their own reference cards available to the store, I'm unsure. But Honestly, I think I can speak for pretty much everyone when I say what is the actual point of this? Like, why even launch the card if there are so few GPUs available? I would personally, and again, I know that everyone may have different opinion here, but personally, I would much rather this card have been uh, launched slash announced a couple of months after that, let's say late April or May, where there's a larger amount of stock available. Again, the cards will sell out as quickly as possible because, well, the total available market is just so huge at the moment. It's like PC gaming has just exploded, as everyone knows. So I do suspect that even if AMD were to have, let's say, 10,000 cards or 20,000 or 50,000 cards for each region, there would still be a good number of um, folks who would be disappointed. But when you're talking like 100, 200, 300 GPUs for a region, that's just... Yeah, it, it just it's just frustrating. I do wonder if one of the reasons that AMD are delaying the launch of the 6700 is either because of part availability, maybe, for example, DDR4 memory, or just some other manufacturing supply issue. Though another possibility is they're waiting to see what NVIDIA does with the RTX 3060 6 gigabyte, which obviously was delayed, and NVIDIA are making so many sweeping changes at the moment to its roadmap because they are facing competition from AMD. That could also be a reason as well. At the end of the day, this product seems to be available more to say that they have a card out, in quotation marks, competing against NVIDIA, but yeah. Also, and I'm going to throw this in here, um, I want to stress that I'm not calling out any AIB specifically, and this is from a reasonable source, but at the end of the day, this information could be wrong, he says, putting all the caveats out there so that people don't come after him with pitchforks. But yeah, I actually was hearing from a really good source that AMD are not exactly happy with certain AIBs. So as I'm sure you're aware, 
uh, AIB pricing has been all over the place for both NVIDIA and AMD cards. And I cannot speak to what's happening with NVIDIA. All I can speak on here is what I was told about AMD. According to what I was told, AMD are pricing the bill of materials that it sells to the AIB at a price where the AIB technically could sell that card at MSRP or at least not a huge markup. And I was further told that uh, AIBs were basically buying the uh, kits, which again, obviously, AMD are selling to AIBs for the purpose of manufacturing the card, and obviously the kits include the GPU core and so on. But while the AIBs were buying the, uh, the kits at a price which they could have used to produce a card which would be MSRP, instead, those cards were sold at much higher prices to gamers. And obviously this basically means it limits the availability of a reference or uh, MSRP cards. As of the time I'm recording this, I don't know what AMD's plans are to try and fix this situation. And again, I want to stress that it could be inaccurate, the information I'm receiving. However, this source has been pretty accurate in the past with several things uh, related to AMD. So this means that the profit margin on these specific cards would be several times greater than what they would typically make. That is what AIBs, of course, would make, because again, AMD have been selling AIBs, certain AIBs, I want to stress, not every AIB is guilty of this, but AMD have sold to certain AIBs, and some AIBs are making several times the profits as they normally would make. And final thing, and this concerns NVIDIA, actually, 0x22h on Twitter, who actually has been right about numerous things previously with NVIDIA's Ampere architecture, as Cupity7 Kimmy stated. Totally agree, you were the first one to guess two times FP32 about Ampere. So according to 0x22h, I mean, you can read the um, tweet yourself, but we know that every SM has four subcores since Kepler, and the basic structure is GPC, TPC, SM, subcore. I guess... Hopper will have the new structure like GPC, TPC, CPC, SM. The new SM looks like an enhanced subcore. There's also a very interesting follow-up tweet from Nemez, which again, you can see on screen yourself. But Turing has two SMs sharing a front-end mem slash cache block with four PBs on either side. A, Ampere, has a dedicated front end, etc. for each SM, and what used to be four PBs on either side are now two BBs, P, two PBs, that was terribly said, with uh, double FPUs. So it does seem like what basically is happening with Hopper, assuming this information is accurate, is that basically they're going more AMD's workgroup processor route, or I guess another way of saying it would be dual CU. This obviously was a really big change when AMD created the Narve slash RDNA architecture, and it would be interesting to see if NVIDIA are doing this. Um, unfortunately, there's not much information as to the rest of the architecture, and also the other logical question is, will this first be introduced with a Hopper, or will it also be in Lovelace, or will there be a small change for Lovelace? Because again, I'm sure most of you know this, but Ampere uh, was supposed to have been followed up with Hopper, but Hopper um, received, received some delay or something or another, and so Lovelace was kind of slotted in between, because Lovelace is going to be a monolithic die, and Hopper, of course, is going to be MCM. I've recently covered this more extensively in terms of performance targets, along with RDNA uh, 3 as well as Intel XE, and I was told that RDNA 3 is pushing for a two and a half times increase in performance over RDNA 2's high-end GPUs, but NVIDIA apparently are quite confident that they can match this with Lovelace. So whether this is going to be just achievable with additional CUDA cores and other bits and pieces that you would, you know, expect since the number of CUDA cores has already been leaked for Lovelace, or whether there are going to be major architectural changes as well, which is what I was hearing, but whether those architectural changes are this, well, yeah. So basically, uh, I can summarize the last few minutes of audio by saying, looks cool, but it's going to be very curious to see how this is actually implemented in what architectures. With that said, 
Hopefully you have enjoyed the video. The normal stuff if you have, like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.